What is up, my lovely chameleon people? I am going to talk about a few things, or t a couple things today, two things, um, that have come to mind now that the weather is very cold here in Los Angeles, California. And since it's so cold, we might have to consider changing the type of bulb we're using. If we're gonna use the same bulb or just a higher wattage, or if we need to add another bulb during the nighttime in order to accommodate to the ambient temperatures that our chameleons need. In this video, I'm gonna go over what panther chameleons need. But I'm also gonna talk about the shower curtain method, which essentially helps with ambient temperature and increases humidity. After I talk about it, I'll even show you how to do the shower curtain method. Basically, I was over at uh, some chameleon friends place today and I noticed that they changed their bulbs. They changed it to like a, I think it's like the Zoomed black light bulb, 75 watt that they were using and I had never personally used it. So I um, so I, I just asked them why why that bulb? And no, no, they're not wrong, but I've always sworn behind these guys. You know, some people just use a regular house bulb, but uh, I don't know, I get, I get really, um, worried you know even though i've used them before and they work uh i just for some reason i've had great success with these and they're they uh they function a little differently than the uh house bulb i believe the heat is directed in a downward fashion to really create a basking area and this is what these guys look like i will show you Right here. Yeah, these guys, yeah. So I've always used these. I've had chameleons, a chameleon that lived seven years off these. So I know they work. Uh, I'm not saying my friends were wrong, but I just have never used them. And you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. You know what I mean? So um, yeah, during the winter, especially like in Los Angeles right now, it's like in the high 40s, low 50s. Um, it tends to get a lot colder in my apartment and I don't want to run the heat all day, you know, and especially if I run the heat all day, then it might get heat all day, then it might get too hot. Um, and essentially you want to have a temperature gradient starting from one corner and this is the hottest spot and then it gets cooler towards the back and then cooler as you go down. Now, um, if you're in a really cold area, you might want to Think about doing a little bit of a higher wattage of a bulb, but just be careful because you don't want the basking area to be um, too high unless you're, you know, unless you're chameleon or your type of reptile requires that. 86, 87 is perfect for the Panthers. Wow, in my opinion, you know, this is all subjective, you know, based off of what works, what's worked for me, maybe it hasn't worked for other people. This is just my experience. Uh, I would highly suggest getting one of these. It will give you the ambient room temperature. So right now it's 76.5. In my apartment. So what I'll do is I'll come in here and I'll check the basking spot. So it's 87.5, which is great. Um, and then we'll just point it at a couple other areas. 82, maybe in the back a little bit. 83.5, so that's perfect. You know, and, and of course, um, you saw I use 75 watt. If you, you're, if you're using something smaller than an 18 by 18 by 36, then I would suggest getting a lower wattage bulb. That way, you know, so say for example, the, the enclosure is half the size and you have a 75 watt bulb. You saw that it was 87 at the top and then like 82 right here. You know, it's not gonna, it's gonna be very, very hot in the cage and you're not gonna really give your little dude or little girl enough room to, um, to really uh, acclimate their temperature because they're, they're cold blooded. They can't, you know, they're not like a human where we naturally sweat or cool down. They have to physically move into a different part of the enclosure in order to cool down. 
Um, so yeah, uh, another thing is uh, humidity. You know, in the summer it's hotter, you know, um, so you're gonna have a lot more humidity working on with these guys. Uh, it's it, the humidity, relative humidity has been about like 50s right now in, in Los Angeles, which is great. And I, you know, I don't particularly lose, use a hygrometer. Some people would really <laughs> not like me for doing so, but I'm comfortable with the amount of mist that they get through their mist kings throughout the day that I, I'm not super worried about them. You know, I make sure my little drainage bucket down here is collecting water and, you know, and I know that they're getting enough water and then I'm making sure that in between the mistings that uh, there's enough time for this cage to dry out. Now, if you're struggling to keep in humidity um, or you are um, worried about them getting misted enough, uh, what you can do is you can essentially create like a, like a chimney effect with the cage. So where the air will flow in and throughout the top, which uh, I've done before and it seems to give them enough airflow since they have the sensitive respiratory systems and they need that airflow. So you can see that in Sage's cage, I have Pothos, Chefalera. Um, I think there's another Pothos back. Oh no, that's, I just sent it in the back right there. Uh, Dahlia's cage, don't know the name of this, uh, but you know, you can get kind of experimental with some of these plants as long as these little dudes and little girls don't eat them. I know veils typically eat the plants more, so be careful. I would say just stick with Pothos, Ficus, Chefalera with those guys so that they don't eat them. Um, actually, don't quote me on the Chefalera, but I know Pothos and like Ficus are fine for them, uh, for veils. Uh, panthers, like I said, don't really eat the plants, so you can you play around with it. Those help with humidity. Um, there's a Chefalera in Osiris' cage. There's one, two, this one's looking not so hot. Just ignore that. <laughs> Three, four Pothos in here. There's a Dracena in the back. Um, just play around with it. Um, if you have a large cage, this is a two by two by four, I would highly suggest doing the shower curtain effect. Um, if you're struggling with humidity, um, another re way Another reason you would use uh, like a shower curtain or something that's to block off one side is this guy, the whole time I've been recording this video, has been over here. And you might ask why, it's because he knows this hot young lady is over here. And he is like a teenager going through puberty, his hormones are racing, he really wants to get her. And he sometimes will get upset with me. He's super sweet, but he gets upset with me when I try to like <laughs> move him to the other side of the cage or what have you. So um, what I'm gonna do, uh, well, what I did was I put a towel here and that works, but what he does is he'll go up here, right? Since this cage is much taller and he'll look into the top and he knows she's in there. And he, I think he's just smart enough to remember too, maybe, who knows? But anyway, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get like a white or like um, if I can find something that's rainforesty uh, to a uh, shower curtain to put here so he won't be able to see. And then that's gonna help a little bit with his humidity. Um, and what you could also use is, um, like I know Petco, PetSmart, reptile stores, oftentimes will have like aquarium backgrounds. I mean, they're sometimes more expensive, but essentially you can use double-sided tape, adhere that to there. I'm back. So the next day, I went ahead and uh, did this. <laughs> Uh, I went ahead and did this. Um, so this is basically just a plastic shower liner, like a vinyl shower liner. Um, you know, I, I couldn't find green. You could go with whatever color, you could go with clear, um, depending on what you're, you're trying to accomplish. Um, I know people that do this for Jackson's Chameleons because Jackson's Chameleons need a lot higher humidity, humidity than, um, than Panther Chameleons. So I just did this one side, so essentially Osiris isn't gonna be able to creep out the top, look out the top right there, and spy on Dahlia. And so essentially what I did is I just bought this shower curtain. Uh, I bought it at uh, Ross. You can also go to like Marshalls, TJ Maxx, uh, Amazon if you believe in shopping with them. I know some people are really opinionated on that. You know, whatever. Or you can just buy a full price one, but 
you know, I, I can't justify buying a full price one because I'm gonna cut it up. Uh, I believe it was like a 72 by 72 inch and this cage is 24 inches by 48. So I'm not gonna go spend 40 bucks on something that I'm gonna cut and mangle. So then, you know, as I previously stated, got the command hooks. I uh, got some isopropyl alcohol and wiped down this top rim of the cage, this top of the frame, so that these would stick. And then I just used the ring grommets, or the, the, yeah, the rings, the grommets, yeah, same thing. So I just use the grommets and it hangs perfectly. You know, alternatively, you could just slit a little hole. Uh, you know, wh however you wanna do it. You know, and I think this is gonna help not only it was Cyrus not, you know, be wild trying to always get to Dahlia, but it's also gonna kind of trap in a little bit more humidity since this cage is so large. Uh, I'm gonna see how it works and I might do the other side as well. But um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, if you don't like the shower curtain, if it looks a little tacky to you, go to Mike Michaels or like Joanne, get some shrink wrap, get some double-sided tape, some like a scotch double-sided tape, put it along the rim, you know, uh, put the, sheeting on the, the shrink wrap, and then you can cut it uh, on the cage, which is, I guess, the easiest if you're not worried about it being super perfect, or you can measure and cut and, you know, go the whole nine yards and then just get a, uh, a heat gun or a blow dryer and then just shrink wrap to the cage. And that looks, you know, that looks seamless. So, you know, it's just personal preference. I needed something that was uh, uh, that was unable for. I needed something that Osiris couldn't see through. So I know a lot of like shrink wraps clear. That wasn't gonna work for me, but I've done it before and I know it works. That's pretty much it. If you have any questions about what we talked about, um, then you can send me a message, or you can send Sage a message, even though she's a little bit shy. You can send flirty little Dahlia a message, or you can send beautiful, awesome Osiris a message. And yeah, you might be wondering, why would I send a chameleon a message? Oh, you'd be surprised. These guys are avid texters and messengers. They, they really have a way with, with using their little feet to text. It, it's, it's the strangest thing. It is the strangest thing. Anyway, thanks for watching. Have a good one.